five hour round trip, four big box stores, I finally got my tongue in groove, shoot dang. What up people? First off, I wanna say thank you for continuing to watch my videos. Very much appreciated. Once again, I cannot do it without you guys, so make sure you guys comment, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscription. I am trying to get my side channel to 20,000 as well, so if you can go over to Shed Happens with Jared Crocker, hit that subscription. I'm trying to hit 20K by the end of October, so if you could do that for me, it'd be greatly appreciated. But as you can see behind me, I have a stack of the tongue and groove. I still have some outside in the truck as well. I had to go, you heard it right, five hour round trip, four big box stores, and I finally got my tongue in groove. Uh, Lowe's let me down this time. I went to two of them. They didn't have it at either one. I went to a Home Depot. They didn't have it. I finally went to another Home Depot, and they had about 100 of them. So out of the 100, I bought 94 of these boards. Uh, the other six were kind of jacked up, so I didn't want to buy them. But uh, just keep in mind, they're $10 a piece, 94 times 10, $940 plus tax, just under $1,000. So that's back-to-back -back videos. I dropped a grand. So uh, anyways, I got to try to get this stuff going. I have decided on my feature wall over here, I'm just going to continue the tongue and groove all the way around. I just absolutely love the way it looks. It uh, brightens up the room. I just love the way all the knots and stuff look. But I did run into an issue, which I mentioned in my other video. They put the stickers on the outside of the wood. So if you guys have any kind of DIY life hack tricks on how to get these stickers off, um, I've already tried peeling them. I don't have any fingernails, so uh, I just need y'all's help. Look at this, guys. I tried peeling this one off. It just does not come off easy. I do not want to sand it because it's going to show where I sand on the board. So if you have any life hacks on how to get these stickers off easy, comment down below. And I'll try to take y'all's advice because right now it's driving me nuts. And there's uh, probably out of all the boards I've put up so far, there's probably eight or nine stickers on them. So um, I don't know what's on these new boards that I bought. So anyways, uh, comment down below, let me know. I'm going to try to finish up this wall in here. My goal by the end of this video is to have this bedroom completely covered in, minus the ceiling for now. I still got to work on that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, this tongue and groove is no joke. It's, it's, not, it's not cheap by any means, but you know what? I chose this, this is my forever home. I want it to be exactly how I want it. You know what? I'm gonna have it just the way I want it. So anyways, let's stop talking, let's get to work. So we are about, I'd say about 70% done with this wall over here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I got to make the angles up here in a little bit. But uh, the reason I put you guys on time lapse and put music and stuff is because I have this little air compressor down here. It's just constantly going off. It's super loud, super annoying. 
and I don't want that just buzzing on the screen for you guys, but uh, the whole time I'm building, I'm just constantly thinking of things in my mind, and uh, here recently, uh, Potato Brain did an interview saying that the pandemic is over, and that had me thinking, if our president says the pandemic is over, why are prices still so high on everything, and why is it so hard to find stuff? Uh, I don't think it should take the average person four different big box stores to find a single board, and uh, it just is what it is, and I hope you guys understand that sometimes uh, the build might come to a halt. I was really, really getting discouraged earlier after the third big box store, and there was no wood, and uh, I almost did not go to that last one, but something told me, just go ahead and do it. You're already in town. I went, and luckily they had it, but uh, it's just stuff like that I think about, like, why is it so hard to find stuff? Uh, I really, really hope that I don't have any more issues finding materials, but like, uh, like our dad says, wish in one hand, shit in the other, see which one fills up first. Shoot dang. <laughs> What's up guys? It is the next day uh, out here on Shoot Dang Ranch. There's always something to do and uh, I'm going to take a quick break from working on the house. I'll get back into that later in the video, but for now, I'm up in the front of the property. Uh, this part is where we see all of the pygmy rattlers out here. I actually killed two of them this week. So I do have my pistol on my side just in case I come across one. I am wearing my snake boots. I got some gloves on and everything. But I need to clear out over here. This is where I think we're going to have our power line come through. There's a lot of uh, little brush over here that I need to clean out. And uh, we went into town earlier, picked up a chainsaw blade. Unfortunately, it was the wrong size. So hopefully the blade that's on the chainsaw is not too dull. Uh, but in the meantime, it's stuff like this I got to take out for the most part. Smaller ones that are maybe an inch wide or so. Uh, a lot of this stuff. But we've already cleared out that side of the driveway over there. So I gotta come in here and just try to clean up some of this stuff. I'm not gonna clean all of it up, uh, mainly just all the smaller stuff. Like this tree right here is gonna go, some of those that are sticking out over here, and then so on. I probably gotta go down about 200 yards or so. Um, it's gonna be a busy day. It's a little cooler, that's why I decided to come out here in the morning. So anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's get to work. Alright guys, well, the chainsaw is giving me some issues. Uh, the chain keeps falling off and it is very, very dull. So I went in with the machete and started cutting some stuff as well. Uh, you can see back this way, I started clearing up some of this stuff. These big trees are going to stay, but it was a lot of the underbrush right here on the side that I've cleared out. Started working my way down. I started to clear out some over here and then work my way down there where the four-wheeler is. Uh, like I said, it's probably about a 200 yard section that we have to uh, clear out. In order for the power lines to come in, they said they need a 20 foot wide section. Uh, and that's the top of the trees as well. You can see behind me right here, it is pretty open over here. We probably have to go in and cut some of the uh, taller trees down a little bit later. And then the same thing down this way, you can see that tree right there kind of hanging over. That one's probably got to go. Uh, but for the most part, it's just stuff like this that's here in the middle. I still got to cut out, unfortunately. Like I mentioned, the chainsaw's not working. So uh, I have to use the old trusty machete and try to get as much done as possible. I'm not gonna try to kill myself out here, but I'm just gonna work in little sections. I think right now I've probably done maybe 75 feet or so, which isn't much compared to about 200 yards to have to do. But uh, 
my goal is to get to where this big tree line is right here. Uh, so that's probably another 75 feet or so to clear out. All right, so before I get back to work, I want to give a shout out to 12 Stones Ranch. Boom, that's an awesome shirt. Uh, awesome dude. We met him down there at the meetup uh, at Pinecone Fest. We also met him at Shoot Dang Fest. He's currently at 283 subs. He is a smaller channel, but the guy is super nice. I think you guys will really like him and his channel. If you guys can do me a favor, go over to 12 Stones Ranch and hit that subscription button and tell him that Jared Crocker sent you over. I know he would be super excited. Uh, once again, he's very, very polite, way nicer than I am. Uh, but uh, if you guys could do that for me, I think it'd be an awesome surprise for him. So it's 12 Stones Ranch. Check him out, hit that subscription, comment on the videos, like the videos, and then once again, tell him I sent you over. So anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's get back to work. goodness oh, that right there is a good workout oh my gosh what I will do is try to cut down some of the bigger ones and then leave the rest for the brush hog I'll come back in with the tractor and just brush hog it oh my gosh so it doesn't look like I've done a whole lot but you get tired quick swing that machete around I got cuts all over me there's these little blackberry bushes and stuff around here with thorns everywhere so it seems like every time I go do any kind of project outside I end up getting cut up by stuff but uh, the only other really big tree I need to take out it's not even big really but this right here I probably have to have a chainsaw for that but I can come in brush hog all this stuff all this little stuff here once again I don't have to go all the way to the fence I just need to clear up some of this stuff right here so all this stuff's gonna have to go Ooh, some of these trees are dead. So basically all the stuff here is gonna go. And then uh, I'm gonna try to stop right here at these trees. Realistically, this trees probably needs to go as well. It looks dead. Unfortunately here in Oklahoma, we've had a, a rough year as far as the lack of rain out here and a lot of trees have suffered. Uh, luckily on our property, it hadn't been too many, but just driving around uh, throughout Oklahoma, you see dead trees everywhere, so. Yeah, anyways, uh, this is just a project I'm gonna work on. It's not gonna be done in one day. It's gonna take quite a bit of time. Uh, luckily for us, uh, the gentleman that works at the electric company is still on vacation for a couple of weeks, so uh, he'll be back later. Um, I just wanna come through here and clear it up. These right here will probably have to go as well. And then that tree over here, just to the left of the uh, four wheelers gonna have to go as well. So anyways, I think I'm gonna try to incorporate a little more stuff on the property on these videos and not just completely doing shed videos uh, the majority will be shed because i need to get that stuff done but there's also so much work that needs to be done out here on the property as well uh, for those that are going to be complaining where's jason and danielle they got their own projects they're working on as well they're working on the uh, pig pen over there they're working on their property their part of it as well so we all have to pitch into our own thing and Right now, this is something I chose to do. I did come in here with the zero turn and mowed everything, so it is nice and uh, mowed down for the most part. There's a branch hanging down back there as well. It needs to be cut, but uh, yeah, that's my goal is try to get this stuff done and then uh, hope that we don't have any issues with the electric company coming out here and getting everything done. I'm hoping that this will be a nice, clear right away. 
I know people are going to say that uh, just have, or why am I doing it basically? Why don't we get the electric company to do it? Because they're going to charge a shitload of money to do it. Uh, they already said that. The gentleman came out and said roughly $10,000, just uh, just an approximate $10,000 on uh, just putting the power lines in, the poles and stuff. That's not including clearing out the property. So just going to do a little bit at a time. And I get a good workout, kind of burn off some of the beer I drank down there at the uh, pine cone fest that we went to that was uh, being held by Heard That and at home with Tom and Rhonda. So we uh, decided to surprise Tom and Rhonda. We love them. Uh, Jason and I lived next to them for years, and uh, they're pretty much our family. And we thought it'd be pretty cool to just surprise them. And boy, did when we went down there, it was uh, quite the surprise. So I'll just say that. But we left early morning drove three and a half hours uh, down to North Texas, hung out for about eight hours, and then got back last night, I think around 12.30 or so. Ran into town this morning, tried to get some feed for the animals. Unfortunately, tractor supply was still closed. So uh, we came back and uh, I started working out here. Yes, I did feed the animals some of these branches. Seems like every time I clear property out here, somebody always comments that I should feed the goats that. So uh, don't worry, I fed them already. Uh, gave them quite a bit of branches. Same thing with the pigs and uh, the other pen over there. They have a bunch of branches as well. So, yeah, anyways, I like the progress so far, but once again, I said I'm not going to kill myself doing this out here. Luckily, it is fall. It's probably in the mid 80s right now. And uh, wearing jeans and snake boots and all this stuff, it does get quite warm. And then uh, on top of that, I got a silicone sleeve over the end of my leg. My, uh, where my prosthetic is. So that's just another thing that is constantly sweating. It is what it is. That's just part of uh, living out here and having a prosthetic. You just gotta overcome everything. And right now, I probably need to go back to my place and dry out my uh, my liner for my prosthetic because I could just feel that it is sweaty. If I just continue moving around and don't dry it out, uh, it's basically like a loose shoe, I guess the best way I could describe it. It starts to slip and then you start to get blisters. If I get a blister, it's going to be game over for me. So I have to take care of myself and uh, make sure that I'm able to still be able to do stuff around here. And if I'm hurting, it only hurts myself. So anyways, whew, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, clear up all these branches right here and the, the few that I kept back here, just throw them off to the side and uh, continue on with my day. All right, so it's probably been about an hour or so. Wanted to get something to eat, rest a little bit. But I'm going to come back here and start finishing up this bedroom. You can see I still got a little bit left up here on this wall. I started working on this tiny little section over here. And then here's the wall over here that divides the uh, bedroom and bathroom. Uh, my goal by the end of this video is just to at least have these walls done. And then uh, I'll start working on the ceiling in here. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll end up putting some kind of curtains up or something and maybe a sheet or something over the door just to block it in. And then I can get this little 5,000 BTU uh, AC unit and put it in there and I can finally have a room that'll stay nice and cool. Uh, over here, that's the AC I was talking about. Uh, it does, does really good at night. It keeps it cool in here at night, but during the day, it's just so small of an AC unit. It's not big enough to push this whole house. But yeah, anyways, I guess uh, I'll stop talking. I'm gonna start putting up some more of this wall and then we'll check back in here in a bit. All right, guys, I am done building for today. I met my goal by completing this wall over here. This is the wall that divides the bedroom and the bathroom. And then also this wall over here, which is my feature wall. You can see I still need to add maybe one or two more boards. Then I can start working on the ceiling. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I barely have any experience building. I'm able to do everything with my own hands. I'm very proud of myself. Nothing's perfect by any means. Kind of goes well with me. I'm not perfect by any means either. And uh, I'm just very, very pleased, very, very happy, and very proud of myself. Uh, trying to build a house basically by yourself, it takes a lot of uh, time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears because I get very frustrated building because it, it never comes out how I want it. But uh, anyways, I'm very proud of myself. I completed the goal that I had set for myself, but I'm not done with this video yet. I said I was done building but I'm not done yet. I gotta finish making this look like a bedroom. You can see I already added in the AC unit over here. That's not gonna stay there once I get my mini split in. This is just temporary. It's only a 5,000 BTU, so it should help cool down this room. Yes, I know that I don't have a ceiling on here yet, so some of the air will go out, but at least I can have that blowing on me at night 
or during the day when I want to relax. Uh, it's still in the mid 80s. That's still a little hot in here. So once I get that going, it should help cool me down and put me in a better mood. So anyways, I need to stop talking. We're going to wrap up this video here in a second. But before that, I got to finish making this look like my bedroom. Boom! Bedroom. It is an 8 by 13 shed to house bedroom. Took me about five minutes to get everything set up. This is a full size bed. I could upgrade to a queen if I want. Uh, this way it gives me a little bit of room on each side of the bed to walk. A little more on this side over here. That's why I put the nightstand there. Uh, everything is powered by the generator at the moment. I pick up these blinds at Walmart as well. I still gotta trim everything out. Probably add in some curtains and stuff. Obviously finish up the ceiling. Finish up the floor. But like I said, five minutes to get everything ready, so it didn't take very long. And then if I go back this way, 42-inch uh, TV, I'll have a dresser underneath it. And then on this wall right here, I'm going to have a wardrobe, probably a three foot wide by maybe six feet tall. Be able to have all my clothes and stuff in there as well. So another reason I moved the bed and stuff in here is I needed some kind of normalcy. Uh, I've been up here since basically January. Started out living in a tent outside, then upgraded to a pop-up camper in the woods, then over here to a shell of a uh, shed to house, which is 14 by 32. I needed to have some kind of normalcy. It just boosts my morale, uh, just makes me feel normal again, not having to sleep on the mattress on the floor. <sighs> Man, this makes me so happy. Anyways, uh, I'll be going live later tonight. Uh, today is Monday. You guys will see this on Wednesday. So if you didn't go watch the live chat, go back, check it out. I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. There's always a lot of people in there and we always have a good conversation. So anyways, Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of my 8x13 shed to house bedroom. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.